Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well as we move into the last couple weeks of this semester. And yeah, uh, hopefully everybody's got something to look forward to, even if it's just classes ending. Uh, we're coming up on uh, holiday breaks, and uh, finals will be over soon enough. We don't really have a final in this class in terms of like a final exam or anything. It's just grading the final written assignment our fourth major writing project, which we'll talk about in a minute. So you don't really have to stress about that uh, for this class, at least. If you haven't turned in your rhetorical analysis essay at this point, uh, please be sure to turn it in as soon as you can. Uh, they were due uh, at the beginning of this week. And also, if you have any other missing assignments uh, or uh, discussion board, no, discussion board, excuse me, my brain's still working on the blackboard terminology that we used before we started teaching through Canvas. Uh, if there are any uh, uh, lecture discussion questions or reading reflections uh, that you haven't done yet, you can go back through and get caught up on those. <clears throat> but definitely start thinking about uh, uh, catching up on those and uh, checking out your grade and making sure you're where you want to be because we got a couple weeks left and there's still time to uh, make up those lost points. Uh, so, uh, this week I do want to start talking about the final writing project and also the final, I guess you could say, subtopic for this class. Uh, we've looked at what critical reading is, why it's a valuable thing to do, a worthwhile skill to cultivate. Then we've looked at the sort of different phases of reading, uh, inspectional reading, skimming, uh, really shallow sort of reading, as well as the deep reading, uh, the, the close reading, uh, the analytical reading. And then we also looked at the different sort of genres of literature that there are. Uh, we've been talking about those the past few weeks. But now I want to talk about really what the end goal of reading is, um, because you can sit down with a library full of books and just read them all, retain the information, and at the end of the day, You've only really benefited yourself, right? You're more knowledgeable about a certain topic than you were before. Uh, maybe it's helped you improve uh, how you go about your everyday life. Uh, but all that knowledge is still contained within you now. Um, everything that you've read, uh, it's in you. And really, uh, the goal of reading is to be able to say or do something new yourself. Now that you've processed all these other voices and thoughts and authors that have come before you, uh, you want to be able to take all that and then form your own thoughts through it, uh, your own opinions. And this will really be something that you'll work on a lot in English 101 and 102. Uh, you'll be encouraged to develop your own thesis statements, uh, come up with your own research, and uh, write about it. But for the final project for this class, I do want you to have the chance of doing that here as well. So this idea of taking multiple voices, multiple ideas, and bringing something new out of them is known as synthesis. Uh, synthesis is when you take a whole, a whole lot of uh, different things, combine them together, and make one thing or a new thing out of it. And the readings uh, for this week and for the next couple of weeks are all based around certain, certain of the same themes because I want you to uh, get into the practice of reading four or five different opinions about a topic and then being able, being able to amalgamate all the information that you've taken from those readings into your own mind and being able to say your own uh, fresh thing on the subject. Uh, but before we get into talking about that in too much detail, I want, do want to go over the synthesis, bleh, the synthesis project uh, with you. So I'm going to pull that up on my screen and then uh, well, after we're done reading that, we'll talk more about the concept of synthesis. Okay, so let me pull it up. Okay, and here we have the assignment description and guidelines for our final writing project in this class, the synthesis project. I'll go ahead and read through these here, and then you can always get a hold of me if you have any more questions. So throughout this semester, you have been engaging with the writings of a large number of authors. Your summary assignment, review assignment, and rhetorical analysis assignment have all asked that you delve deeply into this diverse corpus of writings and that you demonstrate your understanding of these texts on inspectional and critical levels of comprehension. Your last major writing assignment in this class is to now use what you have learned in order to craft your own 
original text. While the past three assignments have required you to respond to another's writing, this project asks you to make the writings of others work for you. You will begin by selecting a topic to write about. It should be a topic that has arisen through the extensive reading that you have done for this class. For some idea of the kinds of topics you might select, and this can be admittedly difficult, see the table of contents by theme on page uh, XXI of 50 essays, about there near the beginning. You'll see a list of all the different sort of themes that the anthology covers, and then the essays underneath those themes that relate to them. So after having selected a topic that interests you, the next step will be to write an assignment, or excuse me, write an essay, complete with your own unique thesis statement or position on that topic that demonstrates your critical engagement with the topics and the authors who have written about it. You will need to utilize at least three different essays from the 50 Essays Anthology in your essay. How you utilize them will be up to you. Perhaps each of the three authors you select make a point that could serve as a supporting argument for your thesis. Perhaps one or two of the writers express views on the topic that you disagree with vehemently and you want to counter their ideas. Or perhaps you merely want to illustrate how multiple authors have viewed a subject from opposite perspectives. You are being given the option to structure this final assignment in any rhetorical mode that you prefer either one of the modes that we have already been introduced to through readings, or through another mode that we haven't covered but that you prefer. In other words, your work can take the form of a narrative, an argumentative essay, a short story or poem, a definition essay, or a comparison-contrast essay. And again, you can see the table of contents by rhetorical mode on page XVII of 50 essays to get a sense of what each of these essays looks like. As already stated, I am also open to considering rhetorical modes not listed in 50 essays. I only ask that you discuss your ideas with me first in order to determine if such a project is feasible. Given the variety of choices allotted, each of your finished projects will be at least a little bit different from each other. However, all of them should at least include the following. There needs to be a list of the three or more essays that you have decided to work with at the top of your page. There needs to be an original, unique title that expresses what your project will be about, an identifiable main idea or thesis, at least two direct quotes from each of the three essays that you select to support your point, so six direct quotes in all. Now, and uh, that shouldn't say execution. <laughs> That should say, an exemption to this is if you decide to pursue a creative writing route, such as a short story or poem. In that case, you will need to make allusions to the essays you select, but you don't have to quote them directly, because that could be kind of hard to do if you did a short story, a work of fiction, or especially if you did a poem. So we will discuss this further in upcoming classes. And finally, uh, it needs to be within the range of four to six pages double space, 12 point times new roman or a similar font, there's nothing new there. So this assignment will be due on December 7th and is worth 25 points. Uh, given that this is finals week when it's due and final grades will be due shortly after, I can't really grant extensions for this assignment like I have for past ones, so be sure that you start thinking about this as soon as you can. Let's see what that idea looks like in practice with the readings for today. Um, so there were three different readings, and all of them had uh, something to do with the idea of race. Uh, the different authors were each writing about their experiences of uh, being made to feel left out of something due to their race or uncomfortable because of their race. And each of them has um, a specific take on the topic. Um, they're writing from different time periods, um, from different locations, from different cities, um, but they're all dealing with the same subject, right? So uh, if somebody asked you to write your own essay, uh, whether it be uh, fiction or nonfiction, on race, and you were thinking about, well, what are some topics that I can uh, discuss when, th when thinking about this? Uh, what do I want to say? It would be helpful for you to have read these three essays or, you know, any essay on the topic. So that way you know um, what all the voices that have come before you have said about the topic. 
and then you can use their ideas, their thoughts to make your own. In a way, when we think about synthesis, uh, it's definitely something that works on the level of uh, multiple texts, but it's even something that works within a single text when we consider that uh, in an argumentative essay, for example, each argument is its separate thing, but then they come together to make a whole argument. So for the rhetorical analysis assignment, we were looking at uh, logos, pathos, and ethos, the rhetorical appeals, and uh, whether or not an author used one or more of them. And I think typically you'll find that in an argumentative essay, an author that uses multiple different kinds of arguments eventually ends up crafting a better essay because, I mean, it's just common sense, right? It's not one good argument, it's multiple mar arguments and they're all reinforcing each other. So you can even think of an essay that utilizes uh, different points or different arguments as being a sort of synthesis of different ideas. Uh, but definitely uh, in terms of coming up with your own brand new work uh, that's referencing past works, uh, you want to think about the different sort of sources you can pull up uh, to really make your own opinion seem more uh, more verifiable, not more verifiable, uh, more authoritative. Um, so say, for example, I want to write an essay about how, I don't know, candy is bad for kids' teeth. Say I've been hired to write this uh, investigative uh, essay about how bad it is. Um, I could definitely just list off my thoughts and my thoughts and feelings about how candy's bad for kids' teeth. Or maybe I could take the opposite stance that okay, it's not bad, it's great, every kid should have candy, um, and that would be good. But then my essay is going to be more persuasive, uh, regardless of which position I take. If I do research and go read other studies, other essays that people have done on it, and then cite them and quote them in my own research. So that way it's not just like I'm saying something. It's like 50 people said something and I kind of gathered them all together and said, I'm saying that too. Uh, kind of uh, borrowing their cred credibility for your own uh, credibility. So, yeah, it's definitely uh, combining uh, different arguments, and, but also combining different sources to make a better argument. This is something that you'll do frequently in English 102 uh, in your research writing uh, class. You'll be asked to find multiple sources and then uh, use them all when you're making your own argument. So the synthesis essay, uh, do start thinking about working with it. Uh, when I was reading through the uh, assignment descriptions and guidelines, I referenced these uh, different table of contents. Uh, but uh, if uh, you wanted to see like a concrete example of those, um, I'll go ahead and show them to you now. If you have the 50 essays anthology and you're having trouble coming up with a topic, because again, I think uh, with a lot of people, the hardest part about this assignment is, okay, uh, what do I want to talk about? Um, I know I have to use different essays to support my uh, thesis, but what, what's my thesis? Well, you can always think about uh, things that interest you, right? interest you uh, things that you like, things that you're passionate about. Um, but if you're really stuck, um, the 50 Essays Anthology um, does have the table of contents uh, listed chronologically from page one to the end, but there's also the uh, table of contents by theme, and you can see it here uh, there's a list of different themes. So there's ethics, education, uh, family, and gender. Um, and there's a lot of those different uh, themes you could talk about. There's history and politics. Uh, there's reading and writing. There's thinking. Uh, there's identity. So look through these if you're stuck and uh, see if any of the, these themes are something that interests you or maybe if it's something that you have a strong opinion about that you want to write about. Maybe ethics is something you're passionate about and you have some thoughts. Uh, because again, the main idea of this assignment isn't so much to just uh, regurgitate uh, what another writer has said. Uh, as in, I, would, I don't want to say uh, as our past assignments, but the past assignments really had that element in them where you were just restating the author's argument in your own words. Uh, to prove that you uh, fully grasped it and comprehended it. 
Uh, this assignment, you're not just doing that. You're saying something new. Uh, you're contributing to the conversation, uh, the voices on this topic, whichever one it is you pick. So you'll have your quotes and you'll make reference to the essays uh, that you decide to use, but you are also thinking about what you want to say about whatever your topic is. So come up with something that you are interested in, that you're uh, curious about or passionate about. And, uh, you know, tell me why. Uh, and maybe not me, but imagine that you have an audience uh, that is going to read your work and be interested in it. Why should they care about your topic? And why is your topic important? What do you feel about it? And then after you have all that, uh, see how you can work in what the authors of these different essays are saying as well into your essay. Okay, so that is the synthesis essay assignment. Uh, I don't want to go too much further into that this week because I think you have enough to think about. Oh, and the reason that uh, last week's discussion board, there I go with the discussion board again, that's why last week's uh, reading reflection or lecture discussion question was uh, a little bit different because that was a practice in taking an idea from another author and then reforming it into your own unique thing. Um, I asked you to write a story that was uh, presenting the same idea or thesis as one of the nonfiction works of uh, social science or history that we've read. So that hopefully gave you a little bit of practice of seeing how you can transform something that an author said into something new for your own uh, uses. All right. Uh, if it, you have any questions on this assignment or on anything else, uh, please always email me. Uh, let me know. And I will see everyone next week.